What's up, guys? My name is Tyler Antiknap, and we are back for round 13 of the Monster Energy Supercross presented by Rocky Mountain ATV, and I've got my good friend with me, Brock Glover. What's up, Brock? Oh, nothing much, Tyler. Just, uh, wow, crazy mountain weather there, as you can <laughs> see on the screen right now. I mean, even the banners got yanked out of the stands and blown off to the side there, and it's quite muddy. We had a big, big thunderstorm and rain come through this morning, and uh, had to do a abbreviated schedule just with a <laughs> session for practice and qualifying for each, each group. So, wow, as you can see, it's uh, pretty wet out there. Yeah, no, absolutely. And um, for everybody that's asking on when the race is going to be on, it's 5 p.m. Um, East Coast time on N NBCSN and 3 p.m. Pacific standard time on nbcsn so those are your watch ties make sure you guys tune in tonight because it is going to be a gnarly race you never know what's going to happen on these mud races you know you'll always see a new winner or you might see eli tomac dominate again you just never know but coming into this first rhythm section here the jumps look dry but the transitions are absolutely destroyed right now and that's going to come into a huge part coming into the tonight's race don't you think Brock absolutely when you're correct on that and uh, just real quick check that at two o'clock pacific time five o'clock eastern and then oh, at, at three o'clock local up here in Salt Lake it's three o'clock local but as you mentioned I mean they did a great job of covering the track I mean they can only deal with what they can deal with but no yeah. matter what when you've got tarps on there we've talked about this in the past when you've got tarps on the track there's always a low point and eventually that water just finds its way into the cracks and as you can see right here a perfect view Thanks to our man, Matt Rice, for going out there and getting his shoes all muddy for us. But in those transitions, you see in the low points, they're all wet. So you know as a motocross fans and supercross fans that you know that these are going to get little ruts in those transitions. and make it it's yeah. gonna be more treacherous the more they ride. Absolutely. And we're, you know, we have this long rhythm section of singles. And, you know, with those transitions going to get messed up and they're going to get ruddy, it's going to be really hard to triple triple through this rhythm section and the safe line is going to be double doubling and that's going to slow the lap times up quite a bit. I'm thinking, you know, the lap times are going to be around the 50 second, you know, 55 second range because, you know, the last couple weekends we've had all the lap times have been the 40s, you know, low 40s, high 40s right in there. So, you know, lap times are going to be longer. So that means less amount of laps, but really good racing. Um, you know, last weekend, we had Cooper Webb winning. We had Shane McGelrath winning also. Points chase kind of lengthened out in the 450 class and shortened up in the 250 class. And Ken Roxon has to be thinking that this is a must-win round for him. I think you couldn't be more correct on that. Yes, and you mentioned the lap times here. The stadium is a little shorter. Also, this week's track, this is the first one of, you know, the third, third Salt Lake round, but this is the first one in Salt Lake that the start hasn't gone the entire length of the stadium. It is a smaller or quaint stadium, college football stadium, so the footprint on the ground is not quite as large. So, as you see, we just came off of what we call the standard triple at the end zone, end zone end of the stadium or the shorter end of the stadium. And then it comes back into a 90 degree to the right and you can see all that standing water. So that's going to be soft all afternoon long. Yeah, I know. Absolutely. And then going back to the rider schedule, that's, you know, it changed quite a bit for today. So they're only getting one 10 minute practice, um, right? You know, you can tune in right now on NBC Gold to watch that. And they only have one 10 minute practice to get this track down. And then, you know, for the next two or three hours, the, the track crew is going to try to get this thing into race shape and, you know, try to fight this weather off. And hopefully we don't have any more rain or any more weather throughout the night. Yes, they've, de they've scheduled a, a one o'clock local. Uh, so you got three o'clock Eastern is when the qualifying is supposed to begin, but they have scheduled a little bit of uh, cushion in there. And I'm sure that I don't hear any bikes on the tracks quite yet. So you did one session, 10 minutes long, so you better not have bike problems or you better not have a crash or something <laughs> first lap or two. You're not going to make the program for tonight, I guess, or, or something. But luckily they have the entries are down uh, to the manageable level. So everybody who does make a lap on the track is going to end up in the qualifying sessions. Yeah, no, absolutely. So, you know, Brock, 
you're the Dunlop guy. Are we thinking that we're going to go with the MX-11 um, for this softer track here? Well, we've uh, actually gone on to the MX-12s, uh, you know, was a super oh, okay. the 11 there. But uh, you know what? There was a lot of them being mounted, and it's a great – it just happens to be a perfect segment as we lead into the one section of whoops passing the Dunlop yeah. blocks here. But, uh, you know, there has been a lot of the MX-12s mounted for the race. I think those are more for when – if the skies were to open up once the track yeah. is covered. But right now, uh, this is still a – it's still a knobby track. I mean, so you're going to have mm -hmm. M3s out there. You're not going to have a, a paddle or a sand mud tire quite yet. But this is, look at this, this right here, uh, maybe <laughs> fishing, fishing pole or uh, something. <laughs> Yamaha yeah, might be bringing yeah. out their boats here or something. Yeah, we definitely need to maybe uh, bring out the jet ski and the water <laughs> yeah. Watercraft session, yeah. So that's a tough session right there. You can see another one here. Unfortunately, the tarps just... Uh, you know, probably broke loose and the water settled down in there. So that whole section there, remember tonight when you're watching the race, when you're heading through those whoops, just remember what you just saw. A section of whoops with a little space, what we saw a large lake, and then you have uh, another little uh, three jumps in a row there. Who knows what uh, what rhythm they're going to take there, but that's going to yeah. be very wet, very rutted, and the track crew is going to be busy all night as we head back towards the counter, you know, going the opposite way of the starting line, okay. down the starting line the opposite way before we get <laughs> towards the finish. Yeah, I know, and we can see the skid steer right in front of us, trying to make that start straight, you know, the best possible it could be. But, you know, just unfortunately with the tarps and everything, all the water just gets down to the lowest point. And we're coming back down the start straight into our final corner and – you know, this racetrack is going to be treacherous. Hopefully, we'll see some new winner, um, winners. And, you know, maybe we'll see Ken Roxon, you know, coming out with a win where this mud race is a lot more strength-oriented instead of cardio. And, you know, thank you guys for watching this virtual track walk presented by Dunlop Motorcycle Tires.